Hey, Dylan. Uh, what's up, Alex? Can you read something for me? Yes, I can read. I know you can read. Well, what does this say? Uh, it doesn't say anything. What about now? It says nothing. And now? It says literally nothing. That's so weird. Hello everyone, I am Alex with Level Up Plus VFX, and in this lesson, we'll be showing you how to put some text on some boards, like you saw in that little sketch. Today, we'll be teaching you all the basics of a four-point track. The four-point track is a basic building block for a planar track, which is something we'll cover in a future lesson. Four-point tracking is an essential skill that every compositing artist needs to know because it's the basis to allowing you to do all sorts of cool stuff. Anyway, let's boot up Nuke and get into the comp. So now that your project settings are all set up, let's go ahead and drop in a read node by clicking R in the node graph. Once we do that, we are going to go to load in our footage. And now if we press 1 on our keyboard while we're highlighted on this, we can see it in our viewer. It is in the wrong color space at the moment. We want it to be an sRGB, so we're going to go over to the input transform and change it to sRGB. The next thing that we're going to do is make sure that it actually starts on frame 1001, because currently if we play it back, we'll notice that nothing is happening. This is because the actual frame range is frame 86,000 through 86,000 and something. So we're going to need to change that. The simplest and most easy way to do that is go over to this frame expression drop down and set it to start as, and we're going to set that to 1001. Now if we go back to frame 1001 and play it, we see our footage is playing. Now in order to figure out exactly how many frames long this is, we can go ahead and click on our footage and type in frame range. Once we've done that, we'll see it goes all the way to frame 1042, so I'm going to go S on my node to open up the settings again and set this to 1042. Once that's done, we can delete the frame range node and begin working on our comp. The very first thing we're going to want to do is add in a tracker node, and we're going to see all these settings up here. For now, we're just going to want to go ahead and add four tracks. So we'll click that four times, and we're going to set each track to one of these tracking markers. So I'm going to drag tracker four and place it here. I'm going to drag tracker three, place it here, tracker two, and tracker one here. Some things to note about these trackers is there are two boxes now. This small box on the inside is what it wants to track, and this larger box is the searching range. So if the next frame, this tracker were to move somewhere out here, the tracker would fail. However, if it, the track moves within this range, it should be able to continue to track it. This can be good to narrowing down things or refining it. So I'm going to go ahead and just make these a little bit smaller and place them in position. Now at frame 1001, what we're going to do is we're going to turn on translate for all of these, select them all by holding shift and selecting them all. You can also do control A, and we're going to go over to this top toolbar here and click track to end. And now it looks like it's finished tracking. We do see that our timeline here is still set to 1100, so we're going to go over to this visible and set it to global again, and it should reset the timeline range to our project settings. Hit the out button here and the in button over here just to set this to my out and in, and when we play it back, we can see that the trackers are sticking onto our tracking marker. So the next thing I'm going to do is stabilize this transform. I'm going to go over to my export settings and I'm going to switch this to corner pin, use transform reference frame and click create. So once we have this corner pin node, we're going to go ahead and plug this into our footage and we can look through it. And when we look through it and play it back, we'll notice that it's actually not doing exactly what we wanted. We wanted this to stabilize our footage, not do whatever this is. Let's click invert on the node. And all of a sudden, this cardboard board is going to be stabilized throughout our shot. Remember, the invert of a match move is always a stabilize and vice versa. If you ever do a single point track, if you want to stabilize something, you can create a match move node and invert it. Now that we have this stabilized space, we're going to go ahead and paint out our tracking markers. Now the easiest way to do this is to add a roto paint node right underneath our corner pin. Switch over to the clone tool, hold control and drag in one direction in order to pull out our paint area. We'll hold shift to grow it. Control and we're going to just click and paint out these tracking markers. So that's one done there. We'll do the same thing on the bottom here. We'll go over to our left side and we'll paint out this one here. Don't worry, we'll bring back the finger and the shadow later. And then on the top here, we're going to go ahead and bring this one out as well. With that done, if we play it back again, oh, we notice that it actually only disappears for one frame. 
So we're going to need to change the lifetime of these paint nodes, because currently they're just living for that one frame. We're going to select all four of our nodes, we're going to click on life and set it to all frames. Now if we play this back, we'll notice that the paint remains on the board for the entirety of the shot. Now all of these look good, except for this very bottom one, which I don't think looks that great. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to delete that clone node, and we're going to try to repaint that one more time. So I'm going to go ahead and maybe adjust this to move down a little bit, and we'll paint it out again, maybe be a little bit more precise with it. Click a couple times to go around the finger a little bit more, and I think that's good. So let's grab those nodes again and set the lifetime to all frames, and let's play that back again. Yeah, I think that looks better. Now, when we redistort this, we're actually going to lose a little bit of pixel sharpness. That's because we're distorting the entire image here, and as it's distorted, certain pixels are being compressed and uncompressed. So when we undo the stabilize, it's going to look slightly softer than the original image did. In order to avoid that and only have that softness start happening on these little edges here that we painted out, we're going to go ahead and switch our roto paint node over to pre-multiply RGBA. This is going to leave just our painted areas out, and if we hit Q to see our full overlay and A, we can see that the alpha is just in those spots that we painted. We're going to want to put this over our original footage, so I'm going to go hit M to add a merge node, and I'm going to say A goes over B, which is our original footage. When I look through this node, we'll notice that we're missing a couple spots, and it looks weird. If we play it back, it doesn't track to our footage. That's because we stabilized our footage. We need to undo that stabilize by copying our corner pin node and pasting it underneath the roto paint and undoing our invert. Now that we've done that, when we play it back, we'll notice that it's actually sticking to our board. But there is still a little bit of an issue here. I'm noticing a little black edge right in this corner, maybe a little bit up here on this edge too. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit more work on my paint node. I'm gonna go back to the frame that I've painted everything else out before. I'm gonna hit Q to open up my overlay again. And I'm just going to paint these areas out from the final merge node. So I'll do it here. I'll add a little bit more over here like that. I think that looks good. And I think there's just a little bit down there that we're also going to go ahead and try to remove and over here as well i'm just going to paint this out from the side remember we're going to bring back these shadows don't worry once your paint is looking the way you want it go ahead and select all your clones again set the lifetime to all and let's play it back and look at it all right i'm pretty happy with how that looks now we're going to go ahead and add in our text so the first thing we're going to want to do in order to add in our text is we're going to go ahead and add in a text node go figure with this text node, we can say whatever we want. So I'm going to go ahead and say, I love compositing with an exclamation mark. Once you choose the message you want, go ahead and add a corner pin node, then also a merge node where we set A to our corner pin and B to our footage. Let's go ahead and look through that corner pin node and we'll see that I love compositing is up there in that top corner. We'll double click on our corner pin and hit Q to see our transforms. And we're going to set these to the corners of our board here. So let's go ahead and do that. And once that's done, we're gonna go ahead and also change the size and placement of the text. So we're gonna go above our corner pin node, add a transform node, hold control and click and drag our center point till it's in the middle of our I love compositing. I'm gonna go ahead and drag that now to the center of the board and I'm gonna scale it up. So something like that and I'll move it over maybe a little bit more. And now, finally, in order to make sure it matches to our footage, we're going to copy this corner pin 2D node again, and we're going to paste it at the very bottom. Now, once we play this back, we're going to notice that it tracks onto our board. However, it changed positions. That's because when we were moving our transform and setting up our corner pin, we didn't set it up on the transform reference frame. Now, there's a couple ways we can fix that. I'm going to go ahead and delete this corner pin track, and I'm going to go back over to the tracker. And instead of using a corner pin 2D use transform reference frame, I'm going to do the same thing, but it's going to be baked. So I'm going to make sure that all of my tracks are selected. I'm going to go ahead and click create. So now I'm going to take this corner pin and I'm going to go ahead and place it underneath my footage. I'm going to delete the one that was live linked and I'm going to do the same thing up top here, delete the one that was live linked and invert this so it's tracked again. Now, these are baked in. Now, if I change anything on this tracker node, it's not going to affect these corner pins. And I'm going to change my transform reference frame. I'm going to set it to the current frame here, and I will create a new corner pin and plop it right down here. Now, nothing changes, and when we play back our footage, we'll notice that our text is tracking to the board. 
awesome, but it still looks really fake. So we can do a couple things to change it. The very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change this text color. We're going to want to match the blacks in our scene, so I think that a good color will be this shadow in between his shirt. So I'm going to go ahead and hit on the color picker option, hold control, and click on his shirt. And we'll get a black that should be roughly that color. The second thing I'm going to do is I think this is a too digital of a font, so I'm going to change the font. I think a font like hmm, handwriting is probably good. So let's go ahead and choose that. We'll scale it up again to make sure it's a little bit bigger. So maybe something like that and we'll go ahead and move it into position, and I think that looks good. So if we go ahead and play it back now, we'll see I love compositing just like that. But it still looks like a 2D track, and it doesn't really look real. That's because it's too sharp. If we look at our footage, we'll notice that it has very soft edges, and the text stands out way too much. So there's a couple things we can do to fix that. The very first thing we can do is go ahead and add a blur node, right here on the beginning of our footage, and we're going to blur out our text a little bit. I think something at the level of 4 actually looks pretty good. So if we play that back again, we'll notice that that sits in our scene much better than the original. The next thing we can do is we can erode this using a noise map. After all, when you write something, it's not always going to retain the exact same color throughout each stroke of your hand, so we're going to want to erode this to make it look like it was drawn over this cardboard just a little bit more. So let's go ahead and add a noise draw node, and when we look through that, we'll be left with a noise texture that looks something like this. Next, we're going to go ahead and add an emerge node, and we're going to have this be A over B like this. And then we'll switch our merge operation over to stencil. When we look through our final merge node again, we can see what changed if we disable this and re-enable it. However, I think that the noise texture is too large at the moment, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to play with this. I'm going to make it a lot smaller, maybe something like 11, and we'll notice that the text is all broken up now, which is something that I was looking for. So I think that's probably good. And if we go ahead and play back our footage, I'd say that that's looking pretty good. The final thing we're going to want to do is bring back this finger and the shadow in this area. So I'm going to go ahead and add a roto node. Once I've added the roto node, I'll copy the stabilized version of our footage and plug it in. I'll look through that as a reference, and we'll notice that this makes it a lot easier to draw a roto node around compared to having to track his hand with the roto node. Now we don't need to plug the background in here like this. I'm just going to go ahead and switch over to the Bezier curve node, and I'm going to draw a quick little Bezier over his fingers. A good tip to keep in mind when doing Roto is that you don't want to add too many points, because as you continue with your track, it may make things difficult. So once I've drawn over a Roto that I think is good, I'm going to go forward four frames, move down, and then just adjust my Roto to match the change in his fingers. So we'll do something like this, one, two, three, four. We'll grab the whole thing, move it down again, and throughout the rest of the footage, we'll just adjust to the rest of the roto. As we're going through this, please be careful to notice that the most important finger here to roto correctly is this one that's going around and near the tracker marker. As it gets further away, it's less important because it's unlikely that our roto paint stuff will be affecting these areas up here, but I'm just doing it for good measure. Now that I've done all that tracking work, I'm going to go ahead and go back and do the same thing to get those frames that I haven't touched on yet. Once we've finished doing our roto, we're going to go ahead and plug this into the mask of the over note. We'll grab this corner pin again, paste it underneath the roto, under, undo the invert, and set the mask operation to invert. Now if we look through our footage here, we'll notice that the finger is brought back on top as we play the footage. But now we still are missing the shadow, so I'm going to go ahead and double click on my roto paint node, and we're going to go over and switch to the paintbrush node. Once we've done that, I'm going to zoom into my footage very closely, click on the color picker here, control click on an area of the shadow, and I'm going to start painting this on with a opacity of 0 0.05 and a hardness of 0. And I'm going to go ahead and paint in the shadow back in here manually. So maybe something like that. It's a little too dark. 
Once you're done painting in that shadow, let's go ahead and select all our brush nodes, set it to all frames. The final thing I'm going to add is I'm gonna soften up this roto just a little bit by giving it a feather of three. I'm pretty happy with how that looks. Now, there is one last thing we can do to make this look even more real. Do you know what it is? That's right, we need to add a little bit of motion blur to our text. If we look at our board here and we pause it, we'll notice that there's slight amounts of motion blur on the edge of the cardboard and on the fingers. However, the text is consistently staying the same amount of sharpness. Luckily, we can add this motion blur using our corner pin track that we made earlier. I'm gonna go ahead and switch my motion blur setting to be one and my shutter speed to be about 0.675 because I think that looks realistic. If we go ahead and play it back, we'll notice that our track looks like it's sliding around a lot more now. That's because our shutter offset is set to start. Instead, we're going to go ahead and set this to centered. Now if we play it back, it should look like it's tracking onto our board again. For a shot like this with very little motion blur, this is going to be a very subtle effect in motion, however it definitely helps your composite look even better. So once we play it again now, we have finally finished our comp. In less than 20 minutes, you have learned the basic building blocks of all compositing. Tracking, stabilizing, roto paint, and roto. These are all essential skills that almost every compositor needs to know in order to do their job well and professionally. I hope you guys enjoyed this lesson, and I will see you in the next one.